Hello and welcome to this week's episode of Higher or Lower, brought to you by OddsCheck, uh, SpreadX and Sporting Index. This is the show where we look at the spread betting markets ahead of the weekend's football in the Premier League and the Championship, and we decide if we think they're going to go higher or lower than the midpoint. I'm your host, George Ellick, and I'm delighted to be joined, as ever, by Dan Worth from Who Scored and Tipster Jack Wright. Hello. I might be able to tell from my croaky voice, but I'm not, mm. I'm not the healthiest at the moment. You're not. But it says a lot about you guys. I, mean, I sent you a message this morning at 8 o'clock saying I'm not feeling too good. <laughs> Happy to show up this week. And you were like, no, the show must go on. Yeah. Get yourself sure. in. So next week, when you're both ill, we'll know exactly what's happened. <laughs> um, so, yeah, it was a, a disappointing week, I would say, for, mm. for kind of all of us last week. Um, all of us not doing too well, uh, but still um, all above 50%. So Jack leading the way on 59%. Mm. Uh, I'm on 57 and Dan, you're on 54 So plenty to play for. What I would suggest is that showed how well we've done prior to the last couple Correct. of weeks. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And the variants have started to... And yeah. also, I think they're the most goals in a weekend in the Premier League. There was. Ever. It was. So, you know, Dan, mm. do you think you would have uh, done, done quite I well? Know. Fun, fun, fun. I know. But then you have the Villa game where there's five goals and Goldman it still doesn't cop us. Oh, that's that was painful, take. wasn't it? Yeah. But Let's move on to this week. Yeah. Let's move on to this week. And we're going to kick off with the Friday night football in the Championship. This is Sheffield Wednesday uh, against Birmingham. Both of these uh, clubs have appointed new managers as the season has worn on with Danny Royal in charge of Wednesday. Tony Mowbray in charge of Birmingham. A relegation clash though. Sheffield Wednesday currently in 23rd. Birmingham just outside the relegation zone. Um, I should say Birmingham's third manager of the season after that Wayne Rooney spell <laughs> that I'm sure we all remember. Um, we're looking at the supremacy market here with SpreadX. So this is the goal supremacy. So the amount of goals the favourites beats the uh, underdog by Wednesday, the favourites here, uh, and 0.25 is the midpoint. So higher is a Wednesday win and a dr- and lower is a draw or Birmingham. And we're going higher or lower, three, two, one. Ooh. So I'm on my own here. Um, oh. I reckon you're going to tell me that Danny Royal's honeymoon period is over and now they're regressing to the mean, as we can see by their, by their recent performances and results. No, yeah, not far, not far off. Yeah, so obviously they have, um, in their last four games, they've lost three and they've drawn one. Uh, in the cup, we saw them concede four against Coventry. That mm. means they've conceded four goals in the three of their last five games in all competitions, which isn't great. Not great. However, I'm not really... You know, I think this is an example of where the results don't necessarily tell the whole story. I think Wednesday are still playing okay. I don't think this is a case where like, we're now reverting back to how it was under Cisco Munoz. Even last time out in the 4-0 defeat at Huddersfield, it was a really tight game mm. until the second half. And then Huddersfield suddenly came forward and scored four goals in quick succession. But if you look at the balance of play up to that point, and you look at the chances created, there wasn't actually too much between them. Before that, you got a 0-0 draw home to Watford where they were quite decent. And then... <clears throat> no shame in my mind uh, conceding four against Southampton and then of course the two undefeated against Coventry too so yeah I think this is a case where Royal is still doing a very good job like if you look at the improvement in the underlying numbers since he took over if you look back at the wins over Hull over Preston over, over Queen's Park Rangers you can see that there has been a you know a blueprint for success here that I think will return in terms of winning ways and that isn't necessarily the case so far under Mowbray's Birmingham like he's a, a manager that I like a lot I've got a lot of respect for him but, you know, there was a 2-1 win at Stoke. Last time out, they were pretty toothless in a 1-0 defeat away at West Brom. I think this is a difficult game for them. And for Wednesday, it is incredibly important that they win this because this is a real opportunity to claw some ground back on, on a team who they're trying to chase down. The pressure's on Birmingham here, and I think Wednesday at home have enough to get past them. Why, Jack, am I wrong? I think the honeymoon period's over for Danny Well when they're <laughs> starting to agree. <laughs> Very good. Uh, yeah, this is a tough one to call. I don't really fancy either of these sides, so therefore the basis that I can get a draw on side uh, for uh, this particular bet and Birmingham is enough for, to convince me to go lower. Simple as that, really. I say, uh, n- there's no result that would surprise me in it. Yeah, you look at Sheffield Wednesday and that... Last weekend uh, against Huddersfield was a terrible result, of course, for me. It was the poster campaign for capitulation. Mm. And um, it just was then followed up by, by another thrashing at, at Coventry. So, not good. Eight points of drift to safety, as you rightly say. This is a, what you classify as a, a must-win game for them now, especially to keep Birmingham within that mix. Um, you mentioned the, the Rooney reign earlier. Um, his first win... Was it his only win? Maybe. Close to it. Anyway, was uh, against Sheffield Wednesday. So if he could muster a win against them, <laughs> then possibly Tony Mowbray, who for me is a massive upgrade, can at least get a draw here, albeit you know, it's away from home. So, yeah, uh, 
he's lost one league game since he's been there. He's obviously not had too long in charge. A tight one. I'll, I'll take the draw. Dan? Yeah. Take the draw? So you, you're not even going higher or lower? You're just, you're just you're saying it's going to be I'm going draw. lower and I'll take the draw. Okay, fine, yeah. Dan? Yeah, I'm, I'm obviously in a very similar boat. Um, Sheffield Wednesday are probably, well, they are just the favourites because they're at home. But it's not really been a happy place for them. Um, only Millwall and Stoke have scored fewer goals at home um, in the league this season than Sheffield Wednesday. You mentioned the thumping by Huddersfield. I don't know. Yeah, was it a thumping? Um, scoreline suggests it was. Exactly. Did you watch the game? Uh, I watched the scoreline. <laughs> <laughs> they lost their head, didn't they? They, they basically, yeah. I think, Danny Roll, yeah, yeah, the poster campaign for capitulation. Yeah, exactly. I think they, Danny Roll said the same thing. Didn't they once mm. they they lost their head, once they went a goal down, and it just unravelled yeah. quickly. And so, James um, Beale, who's a very good keeper, um, yeah, his positioning wasn't great in the last two goals. <laughs> There you go. Well, you've done it. You mm. watched it. Done yeah, it. I watched it. Third um, worst defence in the league. Yeah. There we go. Um, last four games for Sheffield Wednesday, they've lost on aggregate 10-1. Yeah. Pretty mm. bleak. Good side, though. The revolution will continue, I'm telling you. <laughs> um, so that uh, brings our championship uh, start to a close. We'll now go to the Premier League, where we've got uh, Manchester City hosting Everton as the early kickoff on Saturday. City at home here. And we're looking at the same market. This is the supremacy market. But we've got quite an interesting one here. The, uh, we've, got, yeah. we've got a push on the cards. Mm. Um, interesting from the uh, producer of the show. Um, <laughs> where Script writer. With Spread X, uh, City favourites, obviously, but uh, 1.9, uh, the supremacy to sell, 2.1 to buy. So the midpoint is two. So if you go higher or lower and City win by two goals, nothing done. Right, OK. That's the rules. Yeah, yeah. Fine. Well, how else would it be? Well, if it's not, you're wrong, we all effectively, lose. aren't you? Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> in lunacy. Um, so yeah, City, uh, higher or lower, um, what are we going for here? Three, two, one. All yeah, of us are in agreement. Dan, you love goals, you can take us away. Wow, that's my main rationale. <laughs> I just absolutely love goals. Like, the nature of this game, taking the midpoints, makes this a little bit easier because the buy price of 2.1... I, I mean, if you're going lower, you're basically saying that, that City win by a goal... Or they drop points, aren't you? So like higher feels like an easy. Yeah, to yeah, 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 for sure. But I mean, like to buy, then I need them to win by three to make any money. Yeah. In the real spread betting that, markets. That's the way the spread betting works. Yeah, <laughs> but that's that's probably a different thing because I potentially, well, I, I wouldn't do that. Um, Incredible. It's a, it's a good justification for your tip. <laughs> I'm going to tip this, but I wouldn't back it. But I wouldn't. Yeah, fine. But we're playing higher or lower. Yeah, we are. Yeah, so two is good. I'm happy with two. Um, like, I've I've tried my best to avoid looking historically at Man City. Although I think they do like to score goals. Um, so interestingly, I've I've done a bit of work into this. Not, really? not historically, but this season, unbelievably, City have only covered the minus two handicap twice at home. Mm. So they beat Bournemouth six one. They beat Fulham five one. But even when you look down towards the bottom end of the table, they only beat Sheffield United 2-0. They only beat Burnley 3-1. They only beat Forest 2-0. But you're getting a push in all of those. The only win that, that we've seen City have by a solitary goal was against Newcastle, which is 1-0. And they drew against Palace. They drew against Spurs. And they drew against Liverpool. So basically, taking Palace out, like Palace is the one here where they played against a side in the bottom end of the, of the table mm. and didn't even beat them. With the others, at worst, you're getting a push. And in a couple of cases, you're getting a winner. And, you know, I, I do rate Everton. I think Sean Dyche is doing a, a very good job there. I think Luton's form means that they're going to have to take this game seriously now because I think a lot of Everton fans a couple of weeks ago would have been like, we're going to be fine, like the yeah, post-action, yeah. whatever, we're going to be okay. That doesn't feel like the case anymore. Um, and maybe that lends itself to, to, to Everton having to come out a little bit. We saw, you know, I think Phil Foden's form before the hat-trick wasn't getting enough praise. I mm. think the hat-trick obviously shows mm. what great form he's in. The return of De Bruyne has made a massive difference to their attacking threat, like... He looks like he hasn't been out at all. Um, I think City are, as they often do at some stage in the season, really hitting their stride now. And it's going to be very difficult for Everton to live with them. I agree with all that. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I, I started off by saying, is it City time? We know, like last season, they just went absolutely relentless around this sort of time. It's kind of flown under the radar a little bit. They're unbeaten in 12. So they've yeah. kind of already started that, that yeah. process in all competitions. Were exceptional against Brentford. Obviously, forced about 109 saves, I think it was, from from, from Brentford's goalkeeper on Monday night, um, and could have won by a lot more than they did. 
I actually fancy him to win by two here, which is like just before we started recording, I uh, said to you, let's have a look at the, the, the live market and it's still set where it is. So mm. that's why it's quite an important one. So yeah. um, I, I do, and I'd done these, the same kind of rationale and maths as yourself that I looked through it and it was only those two games that stood out as far as then thrashed someone this season we, we're used to seeing them absolutely probably rack up four and five nil wins more regularly than they have done um obviously this was one one last season uh since then not a bad record for for city in the league they've uh, played 20 at home one seventeen, drawn three so pretty pretty impressive stuff um their average um supremacy over that period of time is 1.95 uh they've well, scored 56 and conceded 17 since that draw with everton um 11 away games for Everton, they've lost by two, two or more on three occasions, but only three or more uh, twice, Villa and Wolves for those two occasions. So it's, for me, it looks like a, a, a win by two uh, goals here. So, um, yeah. So you're, you're calling it two again? I'm calling it two. Is this going to be the week where you just, rather than doing higher or lower, I'm just going to nail exactly everything. What's gonna happen. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> Quality, I mm. love that. Um, great stuff, yeah, all of us are in agreement there that... Uh, City over uh, higher than two looks the way to play this one. Uh, on to Nottingham Forest against Newcastle. Total goal minutes is the market here. This is the cumulative amount of minutes that goals are scored in within a game. So if it's a 1 0 win and the goal is scored after five minutes, it makes up five. If it's a 2 0 win, five and 90 minutes would be 95 and so on and so forth. Um, 1 5 1 is the midpoint for this one. Uh, 1 4 6 to sell, 1 4 5, 5 6 sorry, to buy with spread X. So are we going higher or lower? 3 2 1. Ooh. I thought you might be flying solo here, George. <coughs> yeah. Newcastle are obviously the team at the moment that are providing goals. Um, having built on a very strong defensive unit previously, um, it's not looking so strong, or it wasn't at least, until returning players from injury has kind of helped that. But this is all about Forest for me, where Nuno Espirito Santo we know as being a, a pragmatist, I would say. Like his Wolves side yeah. wasn't necessarily a particularly free-scoring one. Um, and he came in and initially it looked like he had been, you know, he was going to try something a bit different in terms of the way that he was approaching games. Um, and we saw in the reverse of this fixture, they went to Newcastle, they won 3 1. There was then the 3 2 game uh, at Brentford. But it kind of feels to me like slowly we're seeing Nuno get his grip on this <laughs> side and we're seeing not the life squeeze out of them, but, um, you know, it, it's going the way of, of more defensive minded football. Like you look at the way they set up against Arsenal basically 11 men behind the ball mm. and Arsenal just had the ball in their half and there was no real attacking threat until they were 2-0 down. They went to Bournemouth, one of the best attacking sides and did pretty well at nullifying their threat in a one-all game. Then last night, Bristol City, um, two goals per early on in the game mm. and then no more, mm. uh, even in extra time. I think Forrest are starting to be uh, Nuno'd and I'm happy in that case before that's factored into the price to go under. Also, Morgan gives White uh, an injury doubt after um, the Bristol City game as well. He's clearly the most important attacking yeah. player. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I'm going lower. Why are you going higher, Jack? I, I, I was lower as well until I did the number crunching and the stats. Felt that I couldn't justify going lower other than superbly like you did. And I haven't got that in my locker. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I think for me, this must be one of the fewest, uh, rarest occasions this season where Newcastle are coming into a game fresher than their opponents. Um, although they are still seemingly rotating who's going to be injured up front and the uh, one remaining fit person gets the slot so it looks like it's going to be Wilson this this weekend um, we'll have to see how it goes obviously it was carnage for them last weekend in that <laughs> roller coaster 4-4 four -four draw with Luton uh, as I say what has happened to that defensive process um, not quite sure my initial thought process would be that once you have that kind of game the focus especially when you've got a week to prepare as they have had would be let's get defensive yeah. order yeah. back. Um, hence why I was going to go lower. But then, as I say, I crunched some numbers. There was 181 minutes in the reverse fixture, which was 3-1 under Nuno's watch. Uh, his Nuno's three home games for Forest have um, produced an average of 257 minutes. And Newcastle's away record was the one that really lit it up for me. Um, ten, uh, nine of their last 10 away games in the league um, have seen a higher number for goal minutes in that across the board it's 9 of 11 it's only that Man City one at the opening um, game of the season we had 31 but they average across the whole season away from home 221 goal minutes per game so it was uh, uh, so far above I just felt that I think they might go and give um, Newcastle a bit of redemption here and mm. uh, sorry Forrest a bit of redemption here and, and, and get amongst it Dan? Well that's the thing isn't it it's like all of those averages they're not just going slightly above yeah. this line they're like 
but then, they're, they're beating it by some way. But does that, like, isn't it inherently unsustainable for, like, a total goal minutes average to be 250? Like, it has to, there have to be yeah. ways to bring it down it towards is, the middle. It is, but I think it's, because it's so far above it, I think yeah. it's got a lot of space to come a down to... It sounds like there's a nil-nil coming soon, just to bring it down. <laughs> Well, it could be, but not here. Okay. Yeah, not, not here. here. Not this week. Um, I mean, you both mentioned like Newcastle games have been carnage. Um, and in their last six in all comps, they're averaging five goals in each game. I, I see that. And, and you guys know I love goals. And I <laughs> just have goals. to... Why do you support Reading? <laughs> Good team. West Ham Arsenal? Not many goals. West Ham Arsenal. That's next. Will there be goals there? Let's find out. Um, also... Uh, if you haven't got a Sporting Index or a Spreadix account, you can sign up for a new customer offer. Um, you can find the link uh, in the description below. Bet 25, get 50. Uh, so you get 50 uh, pounds worth of free bets. You bet 25 quid, including on the total goals market, which is where we are for West Ham against Arsenal. So yeah, this is with uh, Spreadix, the total goals market. Um, 2.95 to sell, 3.15 to buy, which means the midpoint is 3.05. So a lower gives you three. Higher, you need four or more. What are we saying? Three... Two, one. Ooh. Yes. You love goals. I know, but very similar line last week. You um, need to do, do what is in Austin Powers. There was the guy who said, I love gold. Do you know? Oh, yeah. yeah. Maybe I think, you, I think you, need to, you need to do that in a yeah. Dutch accent next week. So practice. <laughs> I'll practice. Goals yeah, yeah. rather than gold. Perfect. Okay. Can we have it now? Got a bit of homework. No, no, no? not yet. No, it will, it will require. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Um, I, I genuinely just learning my lesson from last week. Uh, with a similar line, 3.05, I think, or maybe 3.1, and it was a three-goal game. Um, I look at this one, I think there's probably less. The Who Scored XG model suggests there'll be exactly three. Um, I, so I just think four's a step too far. 2-0 when these sides last met. If we're going for the actual result, I wouldn't mind backing 2-0 again mm. here. Although over three has copped in four West Ham home games, four Arsenal away games this season. Um, happy to ignore and, and go below 3.05. Yeah, it's interesting. When you look at Arsenal's away games this season, um, all three of their defeats have been under, so there have been three goals or fewer. Two of them 1 0 defeats, one of them a 2 1 defeat. And even their wins, like they've, they won three away games 1 0 away from home. Mm -hmm. uh, we think of them, especially at home, as being a, a very, you know, an irresistible free scoring side. I was so impressed with them on Sunday. Yeah. Like, I thought they were brilliant. I mean, Liverpool looked exhausted, but I think you have to give Arsenal the credit that they deserve in that game. Um, but, you know, David Moyes' approach to games against good opposition is always pretty much the same, and it is just sit off. <laughs> just sit off, just give them the ball. At home, they do, they do it as well. Um, and I think we'll see. You know, the, the City game at home, they, they lost 3-1, so that just went over. The United game, 2-0. They're the only two games we've got uh, against teams currently in the top six or seven. So, um, yeah, I'm very happy to go, to go lower. Yeah, I think Arsenal will take a lot of confidence obviously from that result last week. And um, they're creating a lot of big chances, but they're missing a lot of chances as well. So I think they've been the most wasteful, one of the most wasteful sides, certainly uh, this season in, in, in recent games. So I could potentially see that similar pattern here. And I think West Ham, for me, are just one of those sides that just as you're about to write them off, they then suddenly produce a, a, a good result or put one out of right the bag. Yeah. They do. Yeah, they do. They're, they're one of those tricky ones to try and get. And they're a little bit of a bogey side for Arsenal as well, aren't they? So I think they'll cause Arsenal a few problems. And as you say, you know full well that David Moyes is just going to go, right, we're here, we're going to sit deep, see what we've got, see if you can break us down. And Arsenal struggled against that. They obviously lost at home to them, uh, which was a massive surprise. And um, they also lost in the, the cup as well. So they've mm. had uh, not a great record against West Ham in, in recent times. And uh, Declan Rice is a key element. And people are saying, oh, is he struggling playing against West Ham? We'll obviously see it this weekend if that's uh, the case or not. But yeah, I just feel that West Ham are the most dangerous when you write them off. And if that's the case, and I just think that represents a, a tighter game than expected. Mm. And therefore, it's sensible to go lower. And like, well, I'm in essence, in the old school, in the fixed odds kind of stuff here, you'll be looking at playing, is this higher or lower or under or over three and a half goals? Very Got rare that you want yeah, to be yeah. going higher or over than that. So, um, yeah, only Liverpool and Man City conceded fewer than West Ham's 11 at home as well. So they are showing good defensive processes uh, at the London Stadium. Um, home games, just do some number crunching again. Uh, played 11, uh, four plus in, in four um, none of the last five, averaging 2.64 goals per game uh, at home in the league. And Arsenal's away, very similar, um, four plus in three, none of the last four, and averaging 2.55. So they're, again, well under enough for us to confidently go lower. 
Lovely stuff. Two more games on the card. Uh, we've got Aston Villa hosting Manchester United next up. Uh, looking back at the supremacy market, Aston Villa favourites for this one. Uh, 0.3 to sell, 0.5 to buy with Sporting Index. So the midpoint is 0.4. Over here is a Villa win. Uh, lower is, sorry, higher is a Villa win. Lower is draw or United. 3 to 1. What? Whoa! Uh, we're, all, we're all too reactive. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to go first and say that Good. mine is mainly about Villa. Mm. Like, I know United have put together some good performances and some good results. I thought especially first half against Wolves, even though they it took a, an unbelievable goal from Mainu to, to win the game late on. They were very impressive. And I get that, but I still can't get out of my head that that's probably not going to last and there will be issues ahead. I'm just not convinced by Villa right now. I think there's starting to be a bit of a regression for Villa. You know, I know they come here off the back of a 5-0 win against Sheffield United, but they were also played off the park by Chelsea in midweek, mm. which in itself is uh, not a particularly strong run of, uh, strong look. Uh, prior to the Sheffield United game, um, they lost at home to Newcastle. They couldn't score at Everton before that. Snuck past Burnley and then lost to United. So it kind of feels to me like they're back playing like a kind of mid-table side. And if that's the case, I'm not entirely sure. And I, and I you know, Unai Emery's doing, doing an amazing job. There's no denying that. And they've got some quality players. But... I think the the five the win over Sheffield United gives the form a bit of gloss. It doesn't necessarily deserve. Um, um, Jack, what, what, why do you are you more pro Villa? Sorry, anti Villa or pro United? Sam Ty has upset you this morning. Mm. Going Sam, in on Sam Ty's done me a massive favour <laughs> this morning, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that. Yeah, uh, the wheels have fallen off for Villa, haven't they? And I can see the little thumbnail now as I as I speak those words. <laughs> uh, yeah, um, I think I'm I'm on the basis that you asked that question that Villa that. You talk about unsustainable. We all knew really that form they had at home was unsustainable. They couldn't constantly keep winning. So I think the problem for them is that they have now lost a couple and convincingly at Villa Park. So that's kind of taken that yeah. invincibility cloak around them uh, off their shoulders. So um, Newcastle dismantled them. They were very impressive winners there. Chelsea did much the same. So I think that does give uh, a lot of hope for, for the... Uh, future visitors to Villa Park, obviously Man United here, and they're coming in uh, after a string of some very, very promising performances and results as well. Um, so we've been here before with United, of course, where we felt that they might be turning a corner and then they throw in one. Um, but I think Villa went strong against Chelsea in the Cup. Man United are well-rested. I think that that's a quite a key element as well. This is probably the first time I'm pro-Man United since the opening day of the season. Um, so I'm getting the yellow and green scarf on for this one. <laughs> Dan? Yeah, I guess after all of that negativity on Villa, Villa fans will be happy to know that like, I basically call Man United wrong every single week. <laughs> yeah. um, Most do. Let's yeah, face it. They, I just don't understand them at all. Mm. Um, but you're right, like, the last two performances have been, and been relatively good. Albeit they, I think they were hammered in the XG, weren't they, against West Ham, mm. um, despite the 3-0 win. Mm. As you rightly mentioned, Villa have had such strong form at home, but not so much recently, um, and they've actually lost both their home games this year um, by 3-1 scoreline, so that kind of appears to have gone, the sort of invincibility at home, and yeah, I think last night's game as well is actually massive in my overall choice here, because I was actually a bit surprised as to how bad Villa yeah. were. Mm. Um, Especially and, even when you go like 2-0 down at home early, you think you see a reaction, but it's yeah. just Chelsea who are kind of... Yeah, the better side even after that. Oh, good. Yeah. And I was super impressed with Man United against Wolves in that yeah. first half especially. I thought they were exceptional that, that night and mm. the, they just had the right players in the right, right, right places. Martinez is a bit of a, is a blow because obviously his, his style of play, playing that from the back is going to be a, um, a loss for them there. But mm. uh, yeah. No, for sure. But we got Kobe Mainu. He's like, mm. he likes to take the ball under pressure and he can soak up some of that pressure, I guess, mm -hmm. which is seeming or seemingly already having positives for like Hoyland and Garnacho because there's a little bit less of a worry for them. Garnacho is loving to flick balls into Hoyland. Yeah. They're both scoring and assisting now, so that's very positive. The only downside is United's away form, <laughs> yeah, away from home form, has been pretty poor this season, especially against top six sides. I, I don't actually think they've beaten any. Yeah, and better home form so good. Yeah. Mm. So, but oh, that's why we got the draw. And, and also, you couldn't have probably got a more um, damning 
example of that last night was Villa's home form being so good and Chelsea mm. being so bad and we mm. saw what happened there. So, yeah, a very interesting game. Massive one for Villa to like put an end to that and say, no, we're still in this hunt for the top mm. four because a, a loss to would be a rival in that would be very much a big blow. Yeah, absolutely. Um, same game now, but player goal minutes. So the total cumulative minutes that a player scores uh, goals in a game. It sets us at naught if they don't score. Um, but we look at Ollie Watkins here. 30.5, so 29 to sell, 32 to buy. I'd be <laughs> amazed after that last one. If we're not all the same, I really hope you go high. Three, <laughs> two, one. Oh, yeah. I'm there. sorry to disappoint you. <clears throat> yeah. I mean, if we're backing United... Dan, you, you know, you can't really go over here, can you? No, I don't think so. Um, a key thing for me as well is looking at the reverse fixture, he had zero XG, no shots. So, I, I mean, obviously Man United will, will look to do the same. Almost repeated my famous, they'll look to peter him out. <laughs> yeah, um, love that. Which I, I'm, sure, I'm sure they will. I'm sure they will look to do that. Um, like, again, going back to it, like Villa were pretty free scoring at home for, for a long part, especially mm. like um, last calendar year. But that seems to have slowed down and... and like obviously, Watkins plays a big part in that, and his his goal scoring form has kind of followed the same like route as Villa's Premier League form. Mm-hmm. Um, he's just played against Man United nine times and scored just once. Obviously, that is very historical for you and goes back a little while. Um, but yeah, again, you're right though as well. Can't sit here and say, oh, I think Man United are going to do one over Villa, and then be like, yeah, Watkins is going to score. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Jack. Yeah, well, for those of you that are unaware, SpreadX also do um, fixed odds. So I did pop onto the market there to have a look to see what odds were uh, as far as Watkins to score there. And it works out roughly about 65% that he's not going to score. So that gets us on his favour. Yeah. He scored a lot of goals this season, but he's not scored in 14 of his 23 games. That's 61%. So that correlates pretty nicely as well. He did not score in the reverse fixture. And he had zero shots in that particular fixture. Mm. It's the only game this season where he's not had a shot. He's had wow. 68 shots, 28 on target. So uh, he's, he's very accurate with his shooting as well. But he didn't have one shot in that particular game. So which made me question, hmm, is Man United a little bit of a bogey side? Have they got the number on him? So I did look at last season's performances as well. He didn't score in either meeting last season. How many shots did he have across the two games? One. Zero. Wow. Did not have a shot in either game. So what you're mm. saying is that Ollie Watkins lives in whose pocket? It's quite a few of them, isn't there? <laughs> it could be any of them. He's played in all three of those games. I mean, there's so much churn, we don't even know. No. He yeah. lives in Eric Ten Hag's pocket. Yeah, he does. Yeah, yeah. he's okay. got his number yeah, I think he's marked. Scared. scared of Man United. Mad, yeah. 86 shots last season, 47 on target, which is a brilliant ratio. But yeah, not, not one now in, in three games against United over the last two seasons. Made so. in the EFL. Uh, mm, yeah. Um, okay, finally, uh, we've got, I mean, I was going to call it El Sacico, but maybe the <laughs> Chelsea's performance midweek changes that. Crystal Palace hosting Chelsea. Um, Roy Hodgson and Maurizio Pochettino under some pressure given the poor form at the moment. We're looking at shirt numbers. So this is the total number of shirt numbers uh, by scorers in the game. So if number eight scores and number nine scores, then that will make up. Oh, 17. 17. Yeah. I was working out who 8 and 9 were. Uh, Enzo, Enzo. Don't know who number 9 is for. Does Chelsea even have a number 9? Yeah, are you for. Curse, isn't it? Yeah. So that's one all. Job done. If that yeah. happens now. Yeah, well, happen. I know. Uh, so 41.5 is the midpoint here with Sporting Index. So we go higher or lower. 3, 2, 1. Ah, oh, I knew it. Yeah. I just. They're rubbish, these shirt numbers. <laughs> Are they? There are no good ones. Like... Dan, Dan's delved into his deep, dark sack of, of new markets. So you've week. got Eze for Palace. Who's ten- like, I know that Chelsea's defensive out. shape at the moment. Out, exactly. Yeah. Done, out. Mm. At least say out, seven. Seven, Trade. out. Yeah. So low oh, numbers all, gone. All Are you? Nine. Gone. Oh, here we are. So you've got Mateta, 14, or Edward. One of those will start up front, 22 and 14. Yeah, Ooh, nice mm. number for a striker. Fine. Like, I, I just don't... And then you look at Chelsea. Nicholas Jackson, goal machine, 15. Fine. Sterling, 7. Mudrick, 10. Enzo, 8. Like, yeah, Gallagher, top, top scorer. Top scorer. <clears throat> uh, 20. Mm. 20. So you need him to score three times to get over. Three times. <laughs> well, if he does, I'll so be if, very happy, but so uh, someone else can chip in. If, so if... So say Chelsea win this game 2-1, right? Yeah. And Palmer mm. scores one of them. 
you still need another like 22 over mm. over the two. So like, yeah, or you could score twice, two one. Could still down. like it, down, down. I, 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 similar to, to, to total to um, total goal minutes. I think this is sellers market generally, and I'm selling. <laughs> mm. Dan. Yeah, no, like fair enough. I, I, my main rationale is all of the things that you've just said are not good enough. But I think <laughs> I basically think they're like. 20 isn't that high. Like you want like what's like Oscar Bob's like 99 or something. Like when he's playing, that's quite fun. Yeah, true. But I guess that like 41.5 is, is pretty low for this market. No. No? No, because I think you need you'd need over four single digit players to score. Yeah. Fair enough. Well. I think it's why it's such a good market. Because yeah. you look at it and you're like, that's not very many. Well, it's like because the, the goals line in this game is is below three. There you go. So all right. Well, maybe How many goals do you think is gonna be in the game? Seven. Okay, <laughs> or nice. by Palmer. Um, no, I think like three, mm, four. Mm. So, yeah, I, I don't hate it. I mean, the, con the numbers this season for both sides do sort of back you up. It's 26 is the average for Chelsea and 13 for Crystal Palace, which obviously combined them would, would fall just short of this. Yeah. Um, I love goals, man. What can I say? <laughs> Jack, take us home. It always goes down to the same <laughs> point, doesn't it? It's all I've I'm, got. I'm, I'm, Taking a chance here, I think this might You're be You're taking a chance, you think R R uh, Romeo Lavia is going to start up front? He might well mm. do. Who knows? Bonkers, isn't it? Yeah. This is your strongest pick? Yeah, I'd say so. Yeah, I thought it might be. Yeah, how you were talking. I thought you might have gone for like Wharton. You, uh, you like a little bit of Wharton? Oh, Shirt yeah. number 20? Not really a goal scorer. No, not a goal scorer, but no. I thought you might... You know, Great might, player though. Yeah, I know. If, you if like it was him. like the best players on the pitch, shirt numbers, then I'd be, <laughs> I'd be into it. <laughs> yeah. I, I fancy goals in it. I fancy Chelsea to win it. I fancy Chelsea to score... Three goals. So when you look at who will be scoring them goals, Palmer, we've talked about, 20. Jackson, 15, yeah. Gallagher, 23. Not prolific, but obviously scored last night. And Kunku is the one that's interesting for me. Shirt number 18. So um, how much of the game he'll play, but I fancy that. Uh, so I don't really fancy Palace to contribute, to be fair. But mm. um, obviously with their injuries, uh, the pick in the side is going to be uh, quite interesting. But... Um, 19 goals in, that, in uh, the last four across all venues. Uh, Chelsea away games this season averaged 3.55. So I think there are goals in the game. Um, I fancy Chelsea to dominate the scoring. Therefore, um, yeah, that's where I'm going with uh, with a higher here based on, on some of their higher shirt numbers. Mm. Great stuff. Thank you very much as ever to both Jack and to Dan for sharing their thoughts, tips and insight ahead of the weekend's football. As I say, if you don't have an account for either Sporting Index or SpreadX, click on the link in the description and there's a new customer offer of Bet25, get 50. Um, do check out SpreadX and Sporting Index for all of your spread betting needs. And remember that losses can exceed your initial deposit. Check out who scored for all the stats to support all of your selections ahead of the weekend and I'll check out for all your fixed odds betting needs as well. I am going to get a lem sip. But in the meantime, <laughs> uh, enjoy the football this weekend. We'll see you again next week if these guys are both healthy enough to make it. And uh, please do ensure that you're gambling responsibly. <laughs>